the true holy see against the devil's servants the heretics and apostate sectarians, 24 July, 2024 Anno Domini. Official Publication of the Holy Apostolic See of Rome, in Exile, by His Holiness Pope Jacobus I, on the important subject of the ipso facto, and declared by the true Holy Apostolic See, excommunicated heretics of the heretical illegitimate quote orders unquote, and assemblies of SSPX, SSPXMC, SSPV, and all the set of Akintist heretics, their recent heretical fabrications and attack on the true Holy See by the secular authority, evidently instigated by, and connected to, the novice ordo, apostate sect, the true divine institution Roman Catholic Church is being persecuted by the devil through his trusted or possessed servants and apostate sectarian slaves, in retaliation to the truth published by the Holy Apostolic See of Rome, in exile, in order to silence the infallible doctrine of the rightful sovereign pontiff, in matters of Catholic faith and morals, and also the Catholic Church government and discipline, God will repay the sacrilege when the proper time comes. In today's our publication, we would like to present more uh, additional documentation of the inability of these heretics by us excommunicated uh, by our degree from May of 2021 on Domini, because they surely are serving their master devil and destroying souls, sentencing people to hell, because there are quite a few people who believe these publications, especially those who don't know any better, uh, who came from the Novus Ordo sect, who were brought up in the Novus Ordo sect, and then they realized that that's not the Catholic faith that this horrible, horrible sect is producing. And so we have just had a recent uh, occurrence here also when uh, the devil is truly persecuting the Holy Mother Church and sending us uh, our enemies to molest us and to disturb us and so forth. And uh, so it's not an easy situation as it is, but fortunately uh, that's the situation the Holy Mother Church found itself, herself uh, and it's true. Holy Apostolic See of Rome in, in our exile is forced to endure and uh, we'll describe it uh, a little bit in detail. Um, during this course of this publication. The ipso facto, and declared by the true Holy Apostolic See, excommunicated set of Akintist heretic Donald J. Sanborn here again involved in his usual service to his master the devil, in evidently deliberate dissemination of various and many fabricated heretical falsehoods, as the devil is using such perverted souls to destroy the chance of salvation of all those misguided souls that in their blindness tragically decide to trust such evident servants of Satan. It is a solemnly convoked general council. It is impossible that when that council speaks of dogmatic things that it cannot engage the infallibility of the Catholic Church. If you have the Pope and the bishops in a council talking about dogma, and it does talk about dogma, for example, the dogmatic constitution on the church, Lumen Gentium, that's how it's entitled. It does talk about dogma. Uh, it talks about morals. Those things would be necessarily magisterial and would necessarily demand our, our assent of faith. In this document of, of uh, excommunication of Archbishop Viganò, it, it cites him for not accepting the magisterial authority of Vatican II. So that should put to rest all of the Novus Ordo conservatives who use the argument that it was only a pastoral council and had, real no, uh, had no real magisterial or dogmatic authority. So this is what we have to deal with. This evil, very heretic, horrifying heretic is misleading the, the people into believing that this is somehow acceptable. This Novus Ordo are, they are not Catholic, they are sectarians, it's a sect, it's a non-Catholic sect. And this evil doer, this horrifying heretic, the Sanborn, who is not so much as valid priest, he is proposing these things over and over in order for them to stick and to try to, to mislead people into believing that somehow the, this Novus Ordo could be accepted. And it's, it's just, they have, we have addressed this so many times, but it's necessary because they keep, these evildoers, these servants of Satan come, keep coming back 
and they keep introducing these false doctrines and false assertions. And we just we will not stand for it, and we will not we will not allow this to stand because it's just simply not possible to allow this to exist. Obviously, the the, the canon law is explicit, uh, and this is ipso facto. We explained this so many times, but uh, Sanborn himself was member of the Novus Ordo sect, so obviously he. Uh, doesn't have a problem to recognize them because he was part of it. He studied for their so-called priesthood, which is not that's that's a Protestant. They, what they have for ceremonies, Protestant reenactment of the Last Supper, that was introduced by uh, Montini, who had contacts all the way to the Kremlin. That's why past the twelve month at the time when Montini was still under Secretary of State. That's the history of it. On the Secretary of State, that's Montini right there with six Protestant ministers. Who helped introduce in 1969 the uh, what the Novus sect has for that ab abomination, which is not a mass, and they have the Protestant table there. That's a Luther's ceremony. What they what they have. So that's the on the left. That's the six Protestant ministers. On the right, that's Montini in White Castle, which is a sacrilege because even he was never valid pope because heretics cannot assemble validly in valid conclave and start electing one of their own. So what these even those like Sanborn are introducing is somehow accepting them uh, as, as if they were part of the church, they are not. It's a, it's a non-Catholic sect, especially because of this, what they had, what they introduced, and, and not only that, but how they attacked the sacraments, including the sacrament of holy orders. And that was all the way back to 1962. That was Ron Kali, predecessor, who was, Ron Kali was validly elected, uh, after Pius XII died in 1958, and then he started destroying the, the sacraments and everything else, and that's how he uh, tried, excommunicated himself and, and lost the papacy. So, uh, to call these people, this horrible sect, as Catholic is a sacrilege. It's truly not possible to be done, because they have Protestant, re heretical, idolatrous reenactment of the Last Supper. That's not a mess. Never will be a mass. We have condemned this liturgy before in our publications and issued several canons on the subject, uh, anatomized the the whole ideas and all the all the details in in it. So it's all the church has dealt with it. We have, by our apostolic authority, declared the the Novus Ordo liturgy, so-called liturgy, as absolutely abominable, null, heretical, and non-Catholic. And whomsoever dares to Say that that that's Catholic let him be anathema. So it's that's not this is not open to discussion. Moreover, they do not because precisely of that of that Protestant impact no all the last supper, these people are no, not priests. They cut themselves off successfully from the apostolic succession of the church. So they are not priests at all. Because you cannot have priests as a principle which was obviously unknown to all ages, obviously, so because you cannot be a priest. Catholic priest and offer non Catholic ceremony. That's not possible. In that case, there's no priesthood. That's the of intention during their so called ordinations, and that nullifies the whole ceremony because God will not grant the, 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 the grace of the sacraments to those who are introducing something that He has not, He does not will, and that His church has never used. That's a, so, that's, so when these heretics introduce that's also the sacraments are protected by Council of Trent. In general terms, Council of Trent, Session 7, on sacraments in general, especially Canon 13. We have illustrated that here, it's somewhere here. Uh, that's why Tiaki is in the Quran, that's Act of Public Apostasy, so he's not a valid pope. Uh, that's right here. So, we have shown this many times, so, uh, Canon 13, Session 7, Council of Trent. If anyone said that the received and approved rights of the Catholic Church want to, uh, to be used in the solemn administration of the sacraments may be condemned or without sin be omitted at pleasure uh, by the ministers or be changed by every pastor of the churches into other new ones or in be anathema. They cannot be substantial change of the sacraments. They can be all, only changes that are absolutely necessary in the sense of the, uh, for example, the liturgical calendar and so forth, uh, canonizing new saints, so the rubrics have to be added for the new saint. And that's about it. Or 
but that was a substantial change possible only at times when it would otherwise uh, uh, constitute a, a serious problem for the church in the countries where there was still monarchy and they used to be formally um, Catholic and, and then the monarch uh, became Protestant and so forth. So that's why the church ordered this goes all the way back to times of St. Pius V and, and onward, obviously. But the, the prayer for the, for the kings we call, uh, and the canon, the beginning of the canon of the mass, that was removed from the canon because precisely of this danger, because there were no more uh, or very few the, the kingdoms that were, they were, they were Catholic. They were Catholic monarchs, so for that danger, so that they wouldn't create problem, that was it was removed from that. That prayer is no longer in the canon of the mass, but that was necessary to be done. So that's not that's not substantial change. That's not, that's a necessary change. Otherwise, they would offend God because it says unakum, and in the sense of the I mean, unity of uh, the, the faith. So when we pray for the kings. That's not possible when with the knowledge, certain knowledge that they are heretics. So obviously that will have to be changed, and was changed by the joy by the assistance of the Holy Ghost to the popes at that time. So we think that was St. Pius V at that time, and other than that, only rubrics for newly canonized saints and some rearrangement of rubrics as uh, so far. But that was that's uh, not a matter of joy. Uh, the that does not affect the validity of the of uh, the missal and all this. Ron Colin has, on the other hand, changed the missal so substantially that it invalidates it to begin with. That was before they assembled in this Second Vatican gathering of heretics, which was never a valid council of the church. And never they never had these enemies of the church that were already inside. They never had any intention to protect the church and to safeguard anything that needed to be safeguarded. They wanted to introduce these new, th new things. What he's saying in this excerpt, this horrible heretic, is he... Uh, somehow introduces the, the notion that somehow the, that has to be accepted as a, as a council, and then that's not possible. Roncalli by then lost the papacy. You cannot assemble, they, the heretics cannot assemble validly in a, in, in a council and declare that it's a valid council of the church, and not a council of the church. It's impossible. So such assembly is absolutely null. Because, uh, and that's heretical to begin with, to state it, because our Lord says, uh, in, in the Holy Scripture, he says, in the Holy Gospel, he says, um, for uh, two or three assemble in my name, there am I in the midst of them. That means the, the council as it is. And whatsoever you shall bind in another place, not thou shall bind regarding the St. Peter, but you shall bind, that means as the council, and then the Pope has to uh, ratify and promulgate the decrees of the council that belongs to him, and without the people approval there's no no decrease of the council so by then they didn't have valid vote so there was no such thing as assemble as a validly assembly uh, uh, possibility of assembling into valid council so uh, to call it a council is a sacrilege and heresy because they were no longer part of the church they lost the papers they lost their clerical offices that's canon 188 that's right here we have demonstrated so many times. So what the Sanborn is saying is this automatic uh, resignation of the office if a clerk becomes heretic. It says if facto, that means by the very fact, if so you by the, has the force of law and sine la declaration without any declaration. So there's no mistake. Uh, we have shown this so many times. This, uh, but it's necessary to be done. Canon 188 for number four. In Senate, that's in the in the pink sort of pinkish color. That's that's the Latin uh, original and uh, what it was translated in digital form. And this is uh, underneath the, the, the in the white. That's the translation of it. That's 1917 called of canon law. The office of a cleric becomes vacant by way of tacit resignation by the force of law. If so, you right, by the fact the act is committed ex facto without any declaration. If a cleric number four says has publicly defected from the Catholic faith that it affects all heretics so what Sambor says they cannot obviously they do not possess the clerk offices to assemble in valid council so there's no such thing as calling it in any way a council or a decrease it's so-called decrees 
to to show that they are somehow uh, binding in conscience, or at least could be recognized as some kind of degree. Non-Catholic sect, which they by then became, uh, as, as there's just simply no way an impossible by church law to, to uh, recognize it as, as a binding in conscience as, as Catholic, as decrees of the Catholic Church. That's just not possible. And it's now those, whatever they addressed and all this, whatever they published, all of it, all of it without any exception, is absolutely now because there's no more authority in them since they changed first Varum Kalidate, Pontificar Romanum, uh, the, the Book of uh, Ceremonies, including the most important one for that matter, reserved to the bishop, which is Episcopal Consecration, which Ron Kali uh, destroyed for themselves, and that's how they severed themselves from uh, not only from papacy himself, but all of them who gave consent to it, including Archbishop Lefebvre, from their clerk offices, by this very canon. And Ron Kali did introduce new rights because, and that's how he severed himself from the papacy, by divine law, firstly and foremost. And then by the, the decree of the Council of Vatican on 13 session 7 on sacraments in general. This one right here, which we have cited. So that's truly what we are up against, against these evildoers. So we'll play it a long uh, more. Of a sort of conservatives who use the argument that it was only a pastoral council and had, real no, uh, had no real magisterial or dogmatic authority. School shootings are in some way motivated by the anger, the suppressed and un, unexpressed anger of children from divorce. Yes, most of the shooters in schools are from broken families. I think it's something like 80%. Uh, and yes, there is a, precisely because they have a right to be raised in a stable family and that is the, they are deprived of that by the divorce of the parents or some sort of neglect of the parents because the mother doesn't want to stay home and take care of the kids. She goes out and has her career. This person claims to be a bishop. He speaks about such things as affect those who are pagans. That this is really truly not Catholic behavior, part of the Catholic faith to be like this. That there's no such thing as divorce or annulment in the Catholic Church. And it's absolutely not permis uh, permitted and under the canon law. So he's just the layman, this is the short, so we have to stretch it, and we are covering the layman, so we don't want it to be seen, but uh, he doesn't even have the, he sits there with personal distress as a bishop, he doesn't have it. Now he changed this, uh, but uh, he is permitted by this uh, horrible heretic to address matters of the Catholic doctrine, the theolo theology, canon law, and so forth, so that's not permitted for laymen to, to make these assertions. They can ask questions or just remain silent and listen to what is said, but not that they would be permitted to make their own conclusions and voice opinions on matters of Catholic doctrine, matters that are not open to discussion, and moreover not to laymen. So he's, the same one is permitting it. And that's all, it's like an like a open, open door discussion on which, on one hand, there is a horrible heretic, the same one, on the other hand, there's a member of the laity, who was formerly a member of the novice of the sect. So, they are like this, they permitting it. He doesn't have a tie. You can see on the, in that little bit, we left a little bit of room, we put a cover on, but he doesn't have a tie to those, uh, not too long ago, uh, recorded uh, publications that they had in the same one, and so he allows the, the layman to sit there with him, and speak on matters of Catholic doctrine and the canon law and all this and what the sect does and all the voices, opinions and interrupts the person who sits there, the same one who is dressed as a bishop. And now he changed the attire and uh, wears the suit and tie, but uh, it's, it's obvious that these people have no respect for, for the church, no respect for the dignity of the... He doesn't possess it to begin with, who because what Archbishop, who Archbishop uh, Ngo truly was, a heretic, and so that's just, there's just no way. So now they speak about on subject of, uh, he should be saying they deserve, uh, the children deserve Catholic home, they have to be Catholic in order to obtain these graces of God, the protection of the, of the marriage, and so but that comes from the 
nuptial uh, blessing of the valid priest if they are truly Catholic. Has to be the pastor of, of truly the, the parish and that will last the, the right and under canon law and church law regarding marriage. So holy matrimony and, and so the, the otherwise God will not grant the, the, the grace of the sacrament. That's St. Thomas Aquinas, that's uh, right here. So we had shown this so many times. That's right here. It says, by the very fact that a person communicates in the sacraments with a heretic who is cut off from the church, he sins and thus approaches the sacrament insincerely and cannot obtain grace because it's a sin in front of God. God will not grant that person the grace of the sacrament. And then in the yellow it says, the effect of absolution is nothing else but the forgiveness of sins which results from grace. And consequently, a heretic cannot absolve, as neither can he confer graces, grace in the sacraments. That's St. Thomas Aquinas, that's, that's in Summa Theologia, it's, it's truly recorded there. So we have shown this many times. So there's no such thing as uh, that the heretics have some something to say to us. It's just, that's why you have this, it is forbidden, that's why we put this in there. That's Canon 731. It is forbidden to minister the sacraments of the church to heretics and schismatics, even though they are in good faith and ask for them, unless they have first renounced their errors and been reconciled to the church. That means abjuration of heresy. And if that is not done, then there's no such thing as allowing them to participate in the, in the sacraments. They have to be absolved. First, they have to be and they have to be done by somebody who possesses the faculty from the Holy See, because that's a reserved sin. That's Canon 2314. Special reserved to the speciali moda to the decision of the rightful and true sovereign pontiff. And if that, if as these sort of countless heretics are denying the, the, the existence of the rightful and sovereign pontiff, who happens to be in, at this present time our person, then they don't recognize the true doctrine, they don't recognize. The, 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 the constraints of the scan of law, the scan 2314, because if that was possible to be done, then the devil would be in control of the church, because if there was no true pope, that means the devil would be would have succeeded against the Holy Mother Church, because that's a reserved sin. Uh, and it, it, it's, that's this thing right here. And we have shown this many times, and we, also, we like to repeat this, because it's necessary for those who come first. All apostates from the Christian faith and all heretics and schismatics. They are excommunicated, reserved to the Holy See, speciali moda. And this is ipso facto. And why is it ipso facto? What that means, ipso facto, that means by the very fact they are like this. And this, it says, the censure in place, that's from Dom uh, Charles Augustine Bacho, and we have to change this, we keep forgetting about this. St. Joseph misery, not St. Charles misery, but. Uh, the, the censure inflicted is excommunicate for this particular canon, canon 2314, for heresy, schism, and uh, apostasy. Is, uh, the censure inflicted is excommunication uh, incurred ipso facto, which per se requires not even a declaratory sentence. So, uh, this is commentary on the canon law, on the Code of Canon Law, 1970 Code of Canon Law, Dom Charles Augustine Bacho, when he was. Uh, Professor of Canon Law, first in Rome in the English College, and then in Vatican, and and then in uh, uh, because the World War One broke out, he had to return to the United States, and then he was uh, teaching Canon Law in St. Joseph, Missouri, uh, which is uh, north of uh, Kansas City, uh, on the way on on uh, on the river there. Um, so uh, we'll continue with the uh, with this, but this is such a subject that's thoroughly not Catholic, and it's not surprising that this person is capable of, of discussing it like it was something that affects Catholic families, and it's something that should must be avoided to because it's, it's just it's it's savers of paganism of, of something that's not the the safety of children is true Catholic faith and true Catholic family. That's the safety of children. And God himself will protect the children that are not, if they are chosen to obtain his mercy and so forth. So it's up to God eventually and, and always to help those souls that are 
uh, his elect and not those who are to obtain his mercy. But in these are evil times. Uh, the situation is really, really evil and really bad. And these heretics are causing a lot of harm by these their heretical and fabricated opinions and false uh, assertions and so forth, contrary to canon law and church law and so forth. See, so they are neglected. They are angry, these children, because they do not come from stable homes. If you pronounce those words merely as a narrative, as, as if you're talking about what happened at the Last Supper, that's a certainly invalid mass. And why is that, Your Excellency? It's because you must pronounce the words, the term is enunciatively. That means you are saying that this thing, hook, is the body of Christ and mean it and declare it. You see, not merely that you're telling a story, like Robin Hood or something, you know, and it's not to make it, but in a sense, it could be any it's story. Just a story. You see, the, uh, but when you're consecrating it, you're, you're declaring this thing is this, you see, and uh, that's key. All of the theologians before the council said, if you recite that merely narratively, merely, then it's certainly invalid. But what is important in this, in this part of this uh, is that he doesn't even say what is the true mass and what is not. He himself uh, doesn't have a problem calling them Catholic. The snobs of the sect, and uh, the wrong reasons why he states that uh, that has to be rejected or that uh, there's doubt and all this, uh, because it says right there the inscription together with invalid clergy, the novus ordo's invalidity is uh, related to its institution narrative. But that's not why is it invalid as a Protestant. He doesn't say it's a Protestant ceremony, heretical, precisely because that person stands behind a table and faces the people and shows them the Last Supper. That's the defect of intention. That's truly a defect of form uh, and, uh, and truly fundamental defect that invalidates the whole ceremony. They don't have valid priesthood because of that, because of, of this. The Novus Ordo sect is not Catholic, it's a sect. He refuses to say that it's a sect, although he knows now he's saying that's underneath, right there written. So he has to approve it that it's, it's invalid, uh, invalid clergy, he calls it, obviously. So, obviously, this, uh, this heretic is. Uh, by his omissions, allowing the people to uh, absorb and accept those things that they have already learned, whether they were part of the Novus Ordo sect or whether they were um, led to uh, him, his so-called care by uh, the by way of SSPX and, and other such like illegitimate orders. Uh, this is uh, Archim Shon Go, and that's uh, the lineage of uh, Gerard de Laurier on the left. It's, it actually says Gerard de Laurier, May 7th, 1981. So that's the actual, that's Carmona and, um, uh, and Zamora. And uh, Archim Shon Go had a phone on the altar, which is that's, that's, that's a mockery of God. That's a, that's a visible defect that it validates the whole ceremony, They're mocking God. That's Gerard de Lorient, that was, the phone is still there. So how could a person who claims to be a priest allow something like this to exist during his so-called Episcopal consecration? And then we have Jenkins lined up his uh, uh, the publication on, on he uh, remembers how he, when he, they were investigating what really took place, how um, Gerard de Lorient had to stop Archbishop Go in several points because he was not certain whether that's valid. So just, that's the same one right here. And uh, he doesn't have a sign on our eye above our Lord's head, and there's no visible substantial block underneath our Lord's feet, which is part of the tradition. So that's a heresy of all things. And he gives blessing in such a place. And so 
as a heretical crucifix, and the true bishop would never permit something like this to exist. That's him during the debate from 2004 uh, with uh, there was a sectarian layman, a man called Fastigi, sectarian apostate. It was about the, this very soft subject of the Second Vatican gathering of heretics. And so, and Saint Rome was on the defensive instead of how this is not even permitted by under the canon law to have public discussions with non Catholics without the permission of the Holy See, and Saint Rome didn't have it, so there's no such thing to agree to it under the auspices of uh, our patronage. And, and uh, wait, they had uh, Fraternity of Saint Peter Seminarian moderating the whole debate, which says that this person claims to be bishop. So that's the, that's, that's truly the, uh, the abomination. So we wanted to address this. This is the screenshot from the publication that Sam Bond showed. Yeah, we somewhere here, actually. That's right here. The point, let's see if we can go back to the beginning. Yes, it's, that's his, uh, he says, blog, which is, can Novus Ordo Baptisms be trusted? So then point 17, he addresses the assembly of uh, Daniel Dolan, that's right here. Uh, why does this theological difference between the St. Gertrude the Great and Roman Catholic Institute affect the conditional baptism of Novus Ordoites? Uh, so we will go, that's exactly the screenshot, so we go to that screenshot, which is, that's right here. It's all, Sanborn himself was part of the Novus Ordo sect, his biography reflects that. Although they say that the Novus Ordo is a different church from the, this, he speaks about these successors of Daniel Dolan, that's in a uh, suburb of Cincinnati, Ohio, they are there with uh, nearby Jenkins uh, in the United States. They do not require public abjuration of uh, the false church uh, for uh, those coming in from the Novus Ordo. Uh, they saying, but they saying that's the different church from the Roman Catholic Church. Obviously, that's the truth. That's that's the truth. The sect from the Novus Ordo required by by law for those uh, belonging to non-Catholic. He calls it churches, but there's, there's just only one church, so that's, that's uh, at least an, to heresy leading inaccuracy as, as it is error. Furthermore, um, since uh, nearly all of the S.G. St. Gertrude great clergy at one time or another in their lives belong to the Novus Ordo sect, it is, how about they receive? How could they receive the abjuration of converts from the Novus Ordo Church when they themselves have never abjured or did abjure before someone who himself has never abjured and was therefore incapable of reconcile, uh, reconciling uh, them to the Roman Catholic Church? And but this affects Saint Born as well. Moreover. To be reconciled to the church, you have to have uh, someone who possesses the faculty from the Holy See. Uh, that means the pardon of those who are heretics and apostates, obviously. And that is reserved to the judgment of the true Pope. And these are sort of a contest, so they sever themselves from that opportunity as it is. All of that still exists if they recognize the Pope, obviously, then they and, and convert them and. and our examine and all this, everything has to be uh, done properly against uh, the, with the, according to the church law and so forth. A, a prescribed, prescribed form that has to be done and the abjuration of heresy and so forth. So according to their position, they are logically bound to say that their clergy are non-Catholics. This is some point writing about the, this other set of account, this assembly heretics uh, tied with uh, Dolan who died in such a state, horrible state of his soul, his pain for it in hell, what he has done. Uh, 
that is unobjured novus ordite, and that they, their people, are thus uh, members of the novus ordo church, having never publicly abjured the false church, nor that their excommunication lifted. Which is that's another point, because it's it's true, and they cannot be lifted by. And then what he says is another inaccuracy and, and truly leading to heresy, because he says. When one returns from a non-Catholic sect, it is necessary to make a public abjuration of the sect and to have the excommunication lifted by a Catholic priest. That's, that's on the bottom there. Uh, the absurdity of this position should cause the as, as Gertrude the Great uh, clergy to reflect upon their theological principles. This is what the same one is disseminating. That's right here. That's, that's the actual uh, article, but we had to have the so we could have it highlighted. But that's right here. On the bottom, right there. So there is no. <laughs> this is, this affects the, the, him. There's, there's just simply no, uh, no chance of, uh, of reconciling that with his position, his, his situation as it is. Because how could that be reconciled? How, how could that be uh, even accepted when this uh, heretic himself was a member of the Novus Zodosak and therefore is subject to this uh, canon 2314, 1917, Code of Canon Law. The Sandborn. And the rest of them, Jenkins, and those who have already died, they were all, they cannot be, because they don't belong with the church, because they are heretics, and they don't wish to be Catholic, and they have deceived so many souls. So, that's why Sam Vaughan is capable of having heretical crucifix in a sacristy and giving blessing in, the, in that same room. And, and he is able to say these things. That's his one of media right here. The same, uh, he studied in, in, in Diocese of Brooklyn, New York, 1967. He entered the seminary, seminary college. Same year, unhappy with the modernist seminary training he was receiving, he entered Archbishop of Pervertus in, uh, and it says classical languages and graduated at cum laude in 1971 from that seminary college. So, modernist uh, training he was receiving, he entered Archbishop of uh, Marcel of Pervertus seminary in Econ, Switzerland as becoming one of the first seminarians in the newly founded Society of Empires the Tent, SSPX. And he was ordained, so called ordained in 1975, after what Archbishop of Pavar himself, a heretic, for already 13 years, if not longer, because, and he was present in that invalid second uh, Vatican gathering of heretics, so, and he never said it was invalid, so that makes him doubly. A heretic. The, these these people are truly this bad, and it, it is truly this bad. So, the ipso facto and declared by the true holy apostolic see excommunicated SSPV heretic and a manifest pretender to the holy Catholic priesthood, William Jenkins, here again involved deeply in his usual service to his master the devil, in disseminating the heretical fabrications that the devil wants to be disseminated and the eternal punishment in hell of those who believe such heretical lies and willful manifest omissions of the truth by Jenkins, all of them leading to unbelief and heresy. That is the only outcome, God will repay these diabolical evils of these servants of Satan. But this is why we're, we go out of our way to be more careful. Yeah. And it imposes upon us a, a certain level of sacrifice too. Because, I mean, if, if I have a doubt as to whether a sacrament, let's say, of extreme unction, was administered validly to a dying person, because of questions like this that are lingering there, 
<laughs> I mean, I'll drive to the airport, get in an airplane, fly a thousand miles to anoint them to make sure that they're validly anointed. <clears throat> so it makes it more difficult for us, not less difficult. <clears throat> Nothing would make us happier than to, be, to find out that the lingering doubts that are really objective doubts, we think, about the validity of holy orders given, that we could actually settle the question and find out that there is no doubt that these um, orders are, were absolutely validly given, were sort of certain. It would take an enormous weight off our shoulders. The question of the layman was, uh, why is Jenkins calling Williamson only father uh, and Williamson is not, not even priest? So that's, that's because of Archbishop of what they were doing in the Cohen and so forth. And using, them using the 1962 Misa Romanum of Roncalli, which Roncalli introduced, which contains substantial changes that's invalid. So that that's invalidates the priesthood based on defect of intention. So they are not so much as priests, including this heretic right here. And uh, so Archbishop, it goes to, to Archbishop of Fab. He, he was a heretic. There's no, that's why we left. So Mateogia right there, we read it. Heretics cannot offer graces and sacraments. Moreover, the changes that were there were substantial, including St. Joseph in the, in the canon of the Mass, which was never part of this. Roncalli did it on purpose. He was connected with communists. So he was horrible a heretic, and they succeeded electing him to Troy in order to destroy the, 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 uh, the sacraments and for themselves, obviously. The church continued, but church, Holy Mother Church, Roman Catholic Church, was forced into the catacombs at that moment. And punishment of the world and apostasy in the world as it is. So he speaks about why is he calling this uh, Novus Ordo Apostate Sectarian Archbishop, who, this Vigano, who is not so much as, as a priest, valid priest. And uh, because he was so-called ordained at the time when this apostate Bergoglio was so-called ordained, so that was they already had invalid uh, ordinations. So the, the, they are not so much as priests. So and then they claim that Williamson uh, so-called conditionally consecrated this vegan, which is laughable because Williamson himself is not valid bishop because Archbishop of Fab and we have shown this many times before, uh, was using the 1962 invalid uh, form that Roncalli introduced, by which Roncalli lost the papacy because that's, a, that's a forbidden to be done, substantial changes to the sacraments by Council of Trent. We have shown this already. So, and we have shown the video footage of this. We will not put it in here because that, that will be too long and we already have recorded quite a bit. So he, that's what he addressing. Why he addresses Vigano as Archbishop and then uh, Williamson as father, and Williamson dresses as bishop, and they all believe that he is, but he is not. So Jenkins is not faithful to the truth here. He just he gives such a horrifying uh, answer to it that it's just it just shows that he doesn't have that he was used to it to say them because that's how he addressed them at the time he knew them, including Williamson, or that Vigano was. That he stated that Vigano was Novus Ordo clergy, he calls it. And that's why he uses that title for him. Which is, that's, that's just, you see that the, the logic, not only logic, but this contrary to canon law, they are excommunicated, they lost their kaik offices, they cannot exercise them, and they do not possess the dignity of that, of that uh, episcopal consecration. They don't have the, the episcopate. It's not in them, period. So, uh, this is, this is the aftermath of when people think that they can accept these imposters to the priesthood and their opinions. This particular person, one, is, he will be so sorry when he pays to God for all his evils that how much evil he has caused, how, much, how many heretical lies he has disseminated, how people blindly trust him in his horrible opinions. When, when Father Sanborn and... Uh... And we know he was validly ordained priest, for sure. Um, as a Turk bishop, we don't know what's going on with that. But, um, and Father Kelly and I went to Munich, Germany, back in the 1980s. We, we went over there to investigate 
the question of the matter and form, could we get certainty that the matter and the form necessary for the validity of ordinations and consecrations by Took were actually administered, and that those ordinations to the priesthood were valid ordinations to the priesthood, and the consecrations were valid. Yeah. So that these are, uh, you had apart from the question of whether they're Catholic bishops and Catholic priests, but they're validly ordained and consecrated. <clears throat> that was a very important question that, <clears throat> that prompted the three of us to make that journey and go through all that effort <clears throat> to sit down with the two men who were present for, and, and actually principles, you might say, in, in the took cons some of the took consecrations. And we, it was just simply a matter of basic due diligence to try to find out if we could get the testimony, get it under oath, <coughs> get it on record, that indeed the correct, the necessary form for the, cons for the ordination of a priest, the necessary form for the consecration of a bishop, the necessary matter for the ordination of a priest, the necessary matter for the ordination consecration of a bishop, that they were in fact applied. And who else would we talk to? But the only people who actually were there to witness these things. And then we got over there, we found out they were not witnesses. They were not instructed. They didn't know what was necessary in terms of form and matter. They weren't watching for them. They couldn't remember whether they were done. Even, even they couldn't remember even the imposition of hands. That's essential, but that's the matter of the sacrament. But we have to judge what is visible. When you, when that uh, Choi, he was, we have serious doubt whether that was even, he understood what he was doing and whether he was not directly the enemy of the church, uh, probably communist agent or something. Because his brother, who was president of Vietnam, was assassinated, and they saying themselves, they, have, they serve a conscious heretics who were associated with him, that the whole family was murdered by the communists. So, and this person has such a the, the complete disregard for that he was part of the Novozal sect. If he understood what really tr truly took place, that these are communist agents who intruded and started destroying the church, he would have never had anything to do with them. And the communists were in. in uh, uh, surely they were very eager to uh, use uh, fraudulent identities and pretend they were somebody like the, the agent would assume the identity of the prelate and uh, and uh, cause evil under that disguise the Choi the uh, seemingly authority of, the, of that of that high-ranking prelate and so somebody was had a title of archbishop and uh, if he was a communist agent, that he would just continue doing the evils. To go to non-Catholic sect, the El Palmar, El Palmar de Troya, and to ordain people to priesthood, which they, he knew that they will not offer sacrifice to God without any seminary training or anything like that. And uh, then two days later or so forth, consecrate several of them, or some of them to episcopate with the fullness of knowledge that they were, again, not be Catholic, that invalidates the whole ceremony. None of these people are saying that. They don't want people not to have anything to do with these sort of councils because they themselves would have to admit that they were part of the same observer sect and they therefore are excluded from the, not only the graces of sacrament, but what Archbishop Lafayette was doing at that time and uh, when he was accepting them to, to Switzerland for the so-called seminary training and ordination and so forth even though he was valid uh, bishop of the church, uh, still <laughs> had this kind of come for graces in Sacramento. And the liturgy they were using invalidates the whole purpose. That was Chicago published that. We have shown this also in our previous publications. The list of newly invented liturgies, the, 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 the missiles and the, the masses that they were accepting, and that was some of it was from Montini and they were fluctuating back and forth, which none of these changes should have been accepted, and since they did accept it, that involved, that's a defect of intention, because then they're not ordaining people to say the true mass, but the stay to say the, this invention, which is uh, the principle is stated in the 
For example, the encyclical of our predecessor, Blessed Memory of the Order 13, in the encyclical of uh, Sadiqa uh, Qur'an, nullifying, actually, declaring null and condemning the Anglican rites. Because the Anglicans were not offering sacrifice to God, but they were uh, uh, showing the, the, the reenactment of the Last Supper, which is Protestant, which is what the Novus Little sect has. So that's nullified. They don't have valid priesthood and episcopate or nothing. They don't belong with the church. They cut themselves off. And Leo XIII addressed that very thoroughly. So, and that was known even back then when the investigation of the Holy See was done at that first time when the Anglicans applied to be reconciled with the church. Of course, they wanted to be reconciled on their terms, which is impossible for the church to accept, obviously. They have to be truly Catholic and they have to have Georgia Hersey. Some of them did and became even priests and so forth, but that's a different matter. And that was, they had to be very, very holy and, and truly humble and truly willing to be truly Catholic. Imposition of hands of a valid bishop uh, during ordination is, is the matter of the sacrament, and if that person is a heretic, no matter how many times he does it correctly, the grace of the sacrament is not granted by God, which is the case. And moreover, it's invalid because Archbishop of Pever was using the 1962 Missal of Roncalli, which contains substantial changes, which these people, like this heretic Jenkins, knows about because they published it. We have shown this in our previous recordings. So they published the whole list of what the changes were. So that should have told them that that's completely invalid. He's not saying that. He's omitting it, and it has to be willful because he knows he was editor of that publication, that what they call Roman Catholic magazine. So that says it's just obviously impossible for uh, true priests to, 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 to omit it because that is, is, is essential information for the faithful not to have anything to do with, not to trust these publications. And he has to he has the duty towards God to condemn it for protection, for the protection of the souls of those entrusted to him. But he's not a true priest, so he's one of those, as our Lord calls them, hirelings, the false prophets. And he, is, well, he will pay for it in hell. They cannot absolve themselves. And, and so we found that even that testimony is worthless. But what we did find, what they did testify to, were all of the anomalies that were going on during these, the consecration of, for example, Gary de Laurier. <coughs> Uh, we, we heard these men tell us about the things that were amiss and that went awry. And the times that Bishop, uh, that Father Gerard Laurier actually had to interrupt uh, Archbishop Took to correct him when he was invoking, invoking John Paul II as authorizing, things like that. Uh, but they did tell us not only did not help matters in terms of trying to let's say, guarantee the, the validity of these ordinations and consecrations, but actually it, it totally undermined them and raised all kinds of serious questions about them. So that's why ever since we've just been saying that they're, they're totally unreliable. You can't count on them. You can't risk your soul on these things. Mm. Actually, Father Samward pretty much said the same thing to me, as I mentioned before, on the drive back from Munich to Frankfurt. <clears throat> he said, well, he personally had enough confidence in Gerard Laurier that he would have been sure that his consecration was valid, but he couldn't allow his subjective certitude of Gerard Laurier's subjective certitude to, you know, have everybody rely, uh, their very soul salvation depend upon that. You know, you need more than that. So his answer was, I can't, I couldn't proceed on the basis of confidence in this. So this is, what we have shown, this is from Anthony Shekara, and that's after the changes of 1962, the new invalid and heretic of Messiah Romanum by Roncalli, which he had no authority to change because he lost the papacy and more of the substantial changes that Pope does not have authority to change. So this is the list what they did. 1971 to 76, use of initial Montini, who was never a valid Pope, so that's not, can, that name cannot be used. But there are good to change his at a con. So that's, that's, a, that's a great defect and that invalidates the whole priesthood. 1976 dispute at the con proposal to return to John 23rd rubrics, which is 1962. So, uh, uh, and that's, <laughs> that's 
that is still in reality so that's that they you see when heretics when you betray god heretics are allowed to fall into these kind of disputes and they don't have the certitude of the truth period 1976 approval by general chapter for using the pre-1955 liturgy in america 1977 controversy about introducing confitio before communion well it kind of com uh, that's Confitior is the, uh, the uh, part of the absorption formula for the sacrament of penance, not act of contrition, which the SSPX heretics are using and to deceive. So this is, this is just another sign what they have. So that's try to make the general absolution during the mass, to, from even from venial sins and defects and so forth, so that the person is trying that where the, the blessing of the absolution of the priest before the Holy Communion is for. 1971, pre the present use throughout society of society, so, that is SSPX, of hybrid pre and post past the 12 Holy Week rites. Uh, and then the last one, 1982, attempt to suppress the pre 55 liturgy by Lefebvre as part of his negotiations with Ratzinger. <laughs> You don't negotiate with non-Catholic sect. You have nothing to do with them. This is this in itself is the proof of what the, from eyewitness was part of it. He didn't even understand that that's, that invalidates the priesthood. These kind of new introductions because they are all heretical. They don't. They cannot be introduced. These are substantial changes to the mass that cannot be accepted in good conscience and and it. Invalidates the defect, serious defect of intention during the ordinations. That's not. It just invalidates the whole priesthood as it is, because you cannot be ordained to to uh, to, to say a mass according to the rubrics that were never provided church, and that contains substantial changes to the ceremony, to the, the sacrament. In which case, God will not supply the the grace, and the person is a heretic, and obviously it's defect of intention, and there's no priesthood. I mean, even there, you know, you're talking about making an issue of it. Yeah. I haven't really made an issue of it with <clears throat> Father Williamson, Father Dolan. I refer to them as Father Dolan, Father Father uh, Father Williamson. Yeah. So when I say, well, why don't you call them bishops? <clears throat> well, then that gets back to the earlier question. Yeah. You know, and then they might say, well, why are you even calling them Father? Yeah. <laughs> I say, well, I just, um, I'm not making an issue of it, but also because this is how I've always known them. So that we will go to the last um, last excerpt, which is already long as it is, the, our publication, but it's necessary to be done. And that will illustrate, and we have one more that we could add in that, um, which we will actually play right now, because that's Williamson, just to show the, the horrifying situation in that, with that heretic. Uh, because um, of the um, what he's capable, what he was capable of producing, as such. So this is from uh, Williamson. There's no audio. We have cut out the audio. It's only two minutes long, but it's showing his. Uh, this is just uh, recent, or not too long ago, maybe a couple of years back. This is in uh, we gather in England, and it shows his heretical crucifix. It doesn't have the sign R and R I. That's a heresy, and then it doesn't have a cross. That's a piece of furniture right there. That cannot even be accepted as an altar. So this person claims to be a bishop. That's how much that ceremony was truly uh, of value. So we are showing this just to show that this 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 is just those that cannot be permitted to exist. In, in, uh, in the sanctuary as it is, in the oratory. And there's no cross on the front face of the altar, it's just some kind of door. So that's, 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 a, that's a piece of furniture, he cannot be, there has to be a cross to demonstrate, to, to signify what that person, what that priest and bishop attempts to uh, in fact, uh, uh, effect as, uh, for sacrament. Which means that sacrament has to signify what the sacrament is supposed to effect and has to affect what that's supposed to signify. What that signifies, I mean, so, uh, so obviously that has to be the reenactment of, of the sacrifice of the cross of Calvary of Christ our Lord. And 
if that is not done, it has to be a cross because the altar represents the cross of Calvary. If that is not, there's no cross on the front face of the altar. The intention is that the person is not the priest or bishop, and this person is not, a, not so much as a priest. Any former Anglican minister, Archbishop of Haver, didn't have the, uh, the clerk office to dispense him from that uh, perpetual impediment. That's according to canon law. So that's, there's so many, so many evils surrounding these people. So you can plainly see that, this, that they just, uh, he's capable of standing there. And that's why lately he is not showing that because they know that we are looking for these kind of details. And so that's, that's shown that evidently there's no, there's no cross. Period. You can show it in the. Uh, that's, that's, that's truly no cross. Let's see if we can. Yeah, there's, there's no cross right there. Let's just. And that's a false crucifix, right? There's no sign on our right. It's so, some kind of flowers and whatever it is. I, we don't even know. That's visible right here. There's no, no cross. That's just, that's, there's a door. That's, that's, that signifies that he has no intention. He has the manacle on himself uh, during, the, during the sermon. So it's, it's another sign that this person is just, he doesn't have intention to be, to, to be, to do what the church does. It has to be a cross to signify that the altar represents the cross of Calvary during the holy sacrifice of the mass. Because that's a reenactment of the sacrifice of the cross of, uh, of sacrifice of, of, of the cross of Calvary of the, the, the crucifixion of our Lord. That's a reenactment on bloody uh, sacrifice, and that's all. That, that's and that's visible right here that he doesn't have intention to offer sacrifice to God. And so, that's, and then he has heretical crucifix. That is Sanborn right there, Williamson. Uh, uh, so then we go to this uh, particular item, which is, in a way, even worse. That's Francois Chazal from the same so-called resistance. The ipso facto, and declared by the true Holy Apostolic See, excommunicated SSPXMC heretic and certainly not a true Catholic priest, Francois Chazal, here disseminating his heretical fabrications regarding the novice ordo apostate sect and how these heretics do recognize the null and absolutely non-existent quote authority unquote, of this horrible sect of Satan, which heresy only leads millions of souls into hell. Stay away from such servants of the devil. Today I would like to talk to you about traditionis custodes. Now in Latin that could mean the keepers of tradition. But it can also mean, in Latin, the prison keeper of tradition, you know, which is actually the, the meaning uh, of that uh, document, you know. We... Just to show where he's supposed to say his, uh, we don't know which missile he uses, but we suspect that 1962, because these people are not, but we don't, truly sure don't know. It doesn't make any difference. It shows that he has, there's a crucifix above, but it's so above he's not showing the crucifix. And uh, a priest should be shaved, shaven, so no matter what excuses they have as a missionary and all this. And he's saying it from some kind of cabinet. Well, statue, no many holy statues, but that's not how it's done. Uh, it just cannot be done like this. That's, then there's glass, so that means that could give a reflection of that person saying the Mass. and during the elevation, so he, that's idolatry, in fact. So the person becomes part of that reflection on that glass. That should be, that must be offered to God, so it has to be done in front of crucifix, and there cannot be anything else there. Thou shalt not have strange gods before me, it says. First commandment of God. So, uh, that's a matter of canon law, latria, that means God is offered to God only. That's divine adoration. You cannot have this kind of setup and call it an uh, oratory or chapel or something. At least they could have, they should have, should have covered it with some cloth or something, sheet, bed sheet, it's something that would cover it so there would be no reflection. It would just be, the crucifix would be visible, more, they're more transparent. And that they don't, they're not doing it. These people are just, they don't have intention to be true priests. 
waited many years for this to happen. And at last, our prayers have been answered. He's a good man, a good heart, you know, really uh, with the fear of the Lord and a very clean, very clean morals, very devoted priest, praying a lot, but no sordo. And only last year did he start to switch, to make the switch, to stop saying the, 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 the Novus Ordo Mass, and to switch to the true Mass. And uh, when you make the switch to the true Mass, usually very soon you realize the difference of doctrine of the two. The two doctrines are opposite. One is completely Lutheran, Protestant, and the other one is completely Catholic, matches the old catechism, matches the old encyclicals of the Pope. And so you end up realizing that Vatican II is full of errors, full of heresies. And this is what many priests do, including uh, recently in the case of Dijon, where the Bishop of Dijon blames the priest of Dijon to, uh, to say that, uh, uh, the, we, they, uh, that they don't say the, the, the new mass ever. And then they say that Vatican II is full of heresy and that there is a conciliar church, which is not the Catholic Church. And so they are ruining the day when they gave those permissions, because now you have plenty of priests worldwide who say the true mass, and we are switching, even as a consequence, we are switching to traditional Catholic doctrine. Except the problem is that they are not priests and they are part of a non-Catholic sect and they cannot be absolved and they have to be reconciled by abjuration of heresy and they, contain, they, they, they will not be admitted to major orders. That's the decision of the uh, Holy See, of our decision as it is. So such people were sentencing people to hell. So obviously it's not sufficient that they have the intention to be Catholic. Uh, it doesn't make any difference. Right here. It is forbidden to minister the sacraments of the church to heretics and schismatics, even though they are in good faith, and ask for them unless they have first renounced their errors and been reconciled to the church. Uh, we have spoken about this uh, in the subject of because the danger of perversion is so great that most likely there will never be a Novus Ordo person coming from the Novus Ordo admitted to the priesthood by us. But that does not exclude. Uh, potential uh, exceptions as it is, but that would have to be extraordinary sanctity and truly visible help of God, otherwise there would be no such thing. Because the danger of perversion and that, and most, moreover, the situation is so grave today that that's just not, not possible. These evildoers, he said he calls them priests, and he calls them, that means he insinuates that they somehow by, to him, they belong to the church. No, they don't belong to the church. They are outside of apostate sectarians, and they don't have the proper understanding. God is not supplying them with their understanding, and they are not part of the church, and they don't have uh, the, the grace. God is not supplying them with the grace that they belong to an uncatholic sect. They are his enemies, the enemies of the church, and he's considering them. He says that the, the, he doesn't even say that that was never the council of the church. So. These are people who are half, they say half truth and they retain the horrible her uh, heresies uh, alongside with it and then they think that people will just solve it. We have to, this is underneath us, the definition of the Vatican Council, the Troia the, uh, of, of the papacy, for the Holy Spirit was not promised to the successors of Peter that by his Revelation, they might make known new doctrine, but that by his assistance, they might inviolably keep and faithfully expound the revelation or the positive faith delivered through the apostles. And that's it. The Pope has no authority to teach otherwise, but what was always the divine deposit of faith, that means the Catholic faith, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition. These people are negating it by their assertions and so forth. They are saying that, that heretics cannot be that, that, that the reconciliation of the heretics uh, rests by their own admission and, and so forth and then as long as they say they are Catholic that that's 
uh, could be accepted as support. No, that's not the case. No, that's absolutely not the case. Uh, so it's not only abjuration of heresies, but they have to be Catholic, they have to be admitted into the church, they have to be reconciled to the church, they have to uh, recite the formula of abjuration, they have to be tested whether they have the rudiments of the faith, they have to discard everything they learned in Novzorus sect, and still they will still be not, not admitted into the major orders unless exceptional exceptional humility and sanctity is detected in them, and that's truly highly unlikely today, because that perversion of that horrible sect is so great and it's just not possible. Uh, 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 so we, you can see plainly on, on this person what he's capable of saying. Why he's saying that Attempting to say the mass, which is not a mass. He's not a vows priest. He comes from the SPX. We have demonstrated that. So, um. and they find it very dangerous. And Francis, in his in this document, the prison guard of tradition, laments. He says it's lamentable. Look at what's happening. We, uh, you know, I I I ask you uh, bishops in the world to write me about the situation, and then your reply are. Uh, are, are, are really um, appalling, appalling replies, because everywhere we see that, you know, uh, the, the, this exclusive preference of the true mass is spreading everywhere, and then they, they are rejecting us, and so he's, uh, they are in a panic mode, because the worms are out of the can, and it's spreading, and, and so he, uh, stop, there, there must be a stop to it. But the, the problem is that the one who is condemning the Trumas is the one who is allowing the Panchamama in St. Peter itself. He allows any other form of worship into the Catholic buildings. The Novus Ordo is famous. In France, they give away churches to the Muslims to be turned into mosques. No problem. Or Pope Francis goes and pray with a, with a Lutheran. He did that in uh, Sweden and over and again. He prays with all the false religions. And so now, uh, if I understand you well, Pope Francis, now uh, I can pray any religion into a Catholic church. And even in Buenos Aires, the Jews came and worshipped in the cathedral of Buenos Aires. So any religion, Buddhism, Judaism, Islam, Protestantism, can be used of within a, within a Catholic church, but that mass needs special permissions and has lots of restrictions. So to conclude this, our publication today, it is, uh, we have just recently had very uh, unpleasant visits from the local police department because we have instructed because of the situation the Holy Mother Church finds itself, this Holy See, uh, sent our servant to ask for donations so that we can continue to work for the church, which is charitable arms. And some of these Novosordites, Novosordo apostates didn't like it. And uh, it's printed page saying what is it for and that is for the church and all this. And so police officer showed up saying that somehow we have to obtain some kind of license. The Holy See has to obtain a license from the state, from the, from the city where we are residing in our exile to ask the sector authority for permission to be Catholic. So they would ask St. Francis, for example, the Franciscans who had it part of their rule to continue, so they actually want us to starve, as it is, this horrible sack. That was the devil, that was diabolical attack on the church. That's what we have to endure. So obviously that's a horrifying scandal. This person actually, this police officer claimed to be Catholic. He interrupted our servant before there was the time for to say the prayers. So that's part of the rule, and uh, uh, religious rule, and, and uh, the, the police officer was threatening with, with arrest. So we are this, this persecuted, and people who claim to be Catholic, they're supporting our enemies. And we have to uh, be subject to these kind of evils because people just simply don't know the truth. That's what happened, that's what we wanted to describe. Of course, there's aftermath of, after this, so now we, are, we have enough food right now, but uh, we don't have any, any donations or anything because people don't believe who we are. 
they have no intention of helping us and that's the devil they so if they don't see the truth that this is the true church that this is truly the holy see that we are truly the right one true sovereign pontiff by that very doctrine that we publish and by the history of what we have already disclosed and that they recognize non-catholic sect as catholic that in itself is a sacrilege and god will repay it you see because then they don't know the time of their visitation they truly don't know uh, how to be Catholic and that the church has the authority and that if there was no true Pope that that would mean the human race would be lost because that's reserved sin that's that's infallible canon that's canon 2314 1917 Code of Canon Law and so there's no no mistake in this and if if that was true what the silver counts heresy is that's a heresy if that was true, then the human race would be finished. And the apostate uh, continuity would be cut, which is, that means that God would uh, forsake the church, and that's against his divine promise that the case of hell should not be against the church. And they will, that the person of the Southern Party remains unceasingly, unceasingly, just to find it. As the Vatican Council, which these set of accounts as heretics are denying, it's right here. Unceasingly in the church. And then always resides in the, in the successor of, 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 of Peter. If then anyone say, shall say that it is not by the institution of Christ the Lord or by divine right that Blessed Peter has a perpetual line of successors in the promise of the universal church so called let him be anathema that means cursed excommunicated has a perpetual line of successors unceasingly it says that's the vatican council that's why it was it was uh convoked because to protect the papacy and the holy ghost was instructing the church against these several counties heretics of the same born or these uh, in, um, Apostates, truly, truly heretics, as this Jenkins and so forth, against their false doctrines. That's why the title today is The True Holy See Against the Devil's Servants, the Heretics, and Apostate Sectarians. And because we teach the truth, we are being persecuted by the local Novazara sect, of which this police officer was uh, on on spying expedition to intrude uh, into our uh, continuation of the church. And of course, we have told him that nothing is, will change and obviously that he has no authority to, inter, inter, to intervene and to uh, the secular authority is not in charge of the church that's condemned teaching and divine institution Roman Catholic Church is not subject to uh, secular authority oversight and so we told him that it's not just something that he has no, no business being here period so he had to leave and that should suffice today. This dogma divinely revealed outside the Roman Catholic Church, this Roman Catholic Church, divine institution outside this holy apostolic see of Rome in exile. And the other practice of the Catholic faith, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, there's absolutely no salvation of heretics, infidels, or apostates, or schismatics, or enemies of the church, like the communists, socialists, and so forth. All such atheists, uh, heretics, they all burn in hell, they all burn in hell, including these people who belong to these heretical fraudulent assemblies who are not truly orders of the church and there's no salvation with them and obviously the opposite of apostate sect that's the end whomsoever belongs to that neo-protestant apostate sect they will not be saved not one of them